Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeji Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 17th of September. India's Defence Minister says Chinese actions reflect disregard of bilateral agreements. Pakistan government passes three FATF link bills to avoid being blacklisted. And Taliban says no ceasefire until cause of war is discussed. And now for all the details. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Thursday said in Parliament that the repeated transgressions by the Chinese troops along the border in Ladakh reflect a disregard of various bilateral agreements. He said India wants a peaceful resolution of the border issue with China but will not step back from taking any harsh decision if provoked. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Thursday told the parliament that China does not recognize the traditional customary alignment of the line of actual control with India and that the recent conduct of Chinese troops reflects a disregard of bilateral agreements. Speaking on the fourth day of the parliament's monsoon session over the India-China border issue, Singh said that India will not step back from taking any harsh decision and that Indian forces are in a better position to retaliate while adding that China has built up war machines and troops near the border. Singh said that China continues to be in illegal occupation of approximately 38,000 square kilometers in the Union territory of Ladakh. द्विपक्षी समझौतों के प्रति उसका डिसरिगार्ड दिखता है। चीन द्वारा ट्रूप्स की भारी मात्रा में तैनाती किया जाना 1993 और 1996 के समझौतों का उल्लंघन है। ये रेशी का सम्मान करना और उसका कड़ाई से पालन किया जाना सीमा क्षेत्रों में शांति और सद्भाव का यह आधार है। the Defence Minister's statement referred to repeated transgressions by the Chinese troops at Pangong Lake and several other areas in Ladakh since April. On June 15, 20 Indian soldiers were killed in a violent standoff with Chinese troops in Ladakh's Galwan Valley. During a high-level meet in Moscow this month, foreign ministers of both the nuclear-armed nations had agreed to de-escalate the tensions. But Rajnath Singh earlier this week said the border row with China still remains. Three terrorists were neutralized in an encounter with security forces in Srinagar city of India, Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. A civilian was also killed while one security personnel sustained injuries in the pre-dawn gun battle. Three terrorists were neutralized in an encounter that broke out between security forces and terrorists in Batmalu area of Srinagar city in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. Following a tip-off about presence of terrorists in the area, local police and the paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force or CRPF launched a cordon and search operation in Batmalu early Thursday morning, an official said. The operation turned into an encounter after terrorists opened fire on security forces, in which one CRPF personnel also got injured and a civilian lost her life. Today, operation Batmalu एरिया में श्रीनगर सिटी में हुआ जिसमें तीन दहशत का मारे गए The senior police official informed they have successfully killed 16 terrorists in seven operations in Srinagar area of Jammu and Kashmir alone this year In total 177 terrorists have been neutralized in 72 operations conducted across the Kashmir valley the number includes several foreign terrorists with links to Pakistan. In news from Pakistan, a joint sitting of Pakistan's parliament on Wednesday passed three crucial financial action task force related legislations as part of the government's efforts to escape from being blacklisted by the global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog. Pakistan is making attempts to avoid a demotion from the FATF grey list 
to the blacklist during the upcoming October plenary meeting. The joint sitting of Pakistan's parliament on Wednesday passed all three bills to meet the requirements of Financial Action Task Force or FATF to steer the country out of grey list. President Arif Falvi called the joint sitting of both houses of parliament in a last ditch to clear FATF related legislations that were blocked by the opposition last month. After the parliament passed the bills, Prime Minister Imran Khan thanked lawmakers who voted in favour of the legislations for standing with their country. He however said that the opposition's attitude in the session and early negotiations on the bill showed that the interests of opposition parties and the leaders were the opposite of Pakistan's interest. हमारे ग्रे लिस्ट से निकलना और कहीं खुदा न खासता ब्लैक लिस्ट में जाना ये तो पाकिस्तान का इशू है पाकिस्तान इज मेकिंग अटेम्प्ट्स टू अवॉइड अ डिमोशन फ्रॉम द एफएटीएफ ग्रे लिस्ट टू द ब्लैक लिस्ट ड्यूरिंग द अपकमिंग अक्टूबर प्लेनरी सेशन द पेरिस बेस्ड एफएटीएफ पुट पाकिस्तान ऑन द ग्रे लिस्ट इन जून 2018 एंड आस्क्ड इस्लामाबाद टू इंप्लीमेंट अ प्लान ऑफ एक्शन टू कर्ब मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग एंड टेरर फाइनेंसिंग बाय द एंड ऑफ 2019 but the deadline was extended later on due to covid-19 pandemic if pakistan continues to be in the gray list it will be difficult for the country to get financial aid thus further enhancing problems for the nation which is in a precarious financial situation more news from pakistan pakistan's federal investigation agency has placed abid ali the prime suspect in the motorway gang rape case on its blacklist to prevent him from leaving the country police had made the request to the FIA and sent the particulars of the suspect to multiple teams to trace his whereabouts ali was named as the primary suspect in the rape case after samples collected from the crime scene matched his dna from a criminal database of 2013 Police had said two robbers allegedly gang raped a woman last week while she was waiting with her children for help on the Lahore Selkot motorway after her car stopped due to fuel shortage. Police has confirmed the arrest of the co-culprit while the main suspect still remains missing. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban spokesman Mohammad Naim has said in Doha the group will not agree to a ceasefire. unless the main cause of the war is discussed on the peace negotiating table the taliban spokesman mohammad naim said on wednesday that the group will not agree to a cease fire unless the peace negotiators can discuss the main cause of the war in afghanistan at the peace negotiating table in an interview to tolo news Naim claimed that the insurgent group reduced violence levels with the beginning of the preliminary round of talks but the government has not halted its offensive operations highlighting their vision on peace negotiations the taliban spokesman said the taliban wants an islamic system that is answerable to the public and the nation naim said that despite the possibility of ups and downs in the negotiations he is optimistic about the outcome of the talks between the two it has been days since the opening ceremony of the intra afghan talks between the delegation representing the afghan government and the taliban in doha but the two sides have not managed to finalize procedures and methods to conduct formal negotiations In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka has refuted UN High Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet's remarks on the proposed 20th Amendment to the country's constitution. The amendment aims to restore full executive powers to the president, and Bachelet has said it may negatively impact on the independence of key institutions. Sri Lanka responding to the references made by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet has said the comments on the proposed 20th amendment to Sri Lankan constitution are unwarranted and prejudgmental based on presumption in her opening remarks at the 45th UNHRC session in Geneva on Monday Bachelet had said the proposed 20th amendment may negatively impact 
on the independence of key institutions including the national human rights commission this sri lankan envoy dayani mendes to told the to council the amendment will be therefore, passed sri following a complete the democratic the process therefore sri lanka is of the view the comments are unwarranted and prejudgmental the draft 20th amendment to the constitution will be discussed and debated following a complete democratic process where all stakeholders will have the opportunity to present their views therefore sri lanka is of the view that the high commissioner's comments on the proposed 20th amendment are unwarranted and prejudgmental based on presumption the previous 19th amendment adopted in 2019 empowered the parliament and the prime minister by watering down the powers of the presidency the 20th amendment aims to restore full executive powers to president gotabaya rajapaksa since its gazetting last week various groups have expressed opposition to some of the provisions in the amendment it is likely to be debated in the parliament during the second half of october reports suggest hotels and restaurants across india are turning to cloud kitchen model and mobile food vans as customers remain apprehensive amid covid-19 outbreak Delivering food is becoming the quintessential way for businesses battered by the COVID-19 to somehow escape the turbulent time. Hotels and restaurants in India's southern Bangalore city are turning to cloud kitchen model and mobile food vans for survival of their businesses as customers remain apprehensive to pay a visit. With coronavirus cases rising rapidly in India, people are avoiding eating out due to the fear of contracting the disease. Keeping this in mind, hotels and restaurants have adopted online means of delivering food to run their businesses and meet the demands of the customers. When the people is not go to the hotel, how can you? All businesses depend upon the people. Now the online orders have increased. Yeah, on online order is increased. They were uh, prepare their people is prepare for to quality food to serve to their door. Home. at home yeah, there is a one time people is uh, came to hotel now is uh, hotel came to to the people doorsteps in a bid to restart the economy hotels and restaurants were allowed to reopen across india from 8th of june another hotel owner said he started online delivery of food items as even 20% of his business was not left due to the pandemic The sector says it is unviable to run the business with low customer footfall and high cost and staff wages. However, the online delivery channel has helped them make whatever revenues they can. The transgender Hindu spiritual order in India's spiritual capital of Varanasi performed rituals for the salvation of those who lost their lives due to coronavirus during Pitru Paksh, a 15 lunar day period. As part of rituals priest narrated the relevance of offering charity saying it is dedicated to the ancestors Members of transgender Hindu spiritual order Kenara Khada in India's spiritual capital of Varanasi performed rituals for the salvation of those killed by corona virus during Pitru Paksha a 15 lunar day period The ritual was mainly organized for the dikis members of the transgender community who don't have any families to perform their rituals. However, the group also prayed for those killed by corona virus. As per the Hindu calendar, Pitru Paksha usually falls in the month of September or October. As part of the ritual, the priest narrated the relevance of offering the pin daan or charity, saying it is dedicated to ancestors. हमारे समाज के लोग जो चले गए जो अपघात में लोग चले गए जिनको अकारण मृत्यु प्राप्त हुई जैसे अब कोरोना काल चल रहा है तो इस साल हम कोरोना पीड़ित जो अपना देह त्याग चुके जो किन्नर अपना देह त्याग चुके उनके लिए त्रिपिंडी श्राद्ध कर रहे हैं पितृपक्षा इज फॉलोड बाय द स्टार्ट ऑफ नवरात्रि और नाइन नाइट्स द नाइन डे लॉन्ग फेस्टिवल डेडिकेटेड टू मेनी इनकारनेशंस ऑफ हिंदू गॉडेस दुर्गा वेल दैट्स ऑल वी हैव फॉर यू फ्रॉम साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग नाउ आवर व्यूअर्स कैन वॉच द शो ऑन साउथ एशिया न्यूज़ लाइन डॉट कॉम यू कैन आल्सो विजिट अस ऑन फेसबुक डॉट कॉम स्लैश एज एशिया न्यूज़ लाइन एंड फॉलो अस ऑन ट्विटर एट एज एशिया न्यूज़ लाइन दैट्स ऑल इन टुनाइट्स एडिशन विल सी यू सेम टाइम टुमारो गुड नाइट 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button